people have called me from all over the country and emailed me from all over the world asking me if I can give them comfort and others comfort. Even over ham radio, I'm N7IU, and uh, that's my call sign, they have been asking me these things. I am a, a historian, and I've studied political science and Western civilization, and I am a student of history. And they ask me many times, I'm an old man, as you can see, and I lived through a lot of things in my life. I was born very poor. I mean, in extreme poverty. My family moved from Indian Territory or Oklahoma into California to be mistaken for White Okies so that they could own land. Everything in Oklahoma or Indian Territory was taken from them. They were very abused and they wanted, they were hard workers. All my family were hard workers. But they couldn't keep what they had. Treaty after treaty was made. And so they came to California to be mistaken for White Oakies so they could own a piece of land and that's what they did. Poor as they were, they bought land. Because they wanted to own some piece of land where they could stay and have a, have a shack. And I grew up in a shack with a dirt floor. Boards that had floated down the canal bank and they just had bits and pieces of them. They crippled them together and, and used nails. My grandfather had this cans and cans of used nails. I never saw them buy a, a new nail in my life. He had a flat iron out there and he straightened the nails out on it. And we had an outhouse. We had gardens. We had fruit trees. And we had a life. We lived on beans and potatoes occasionally. We had very little meat, salt pork, and, and whatever we threw in the bean pot. <clears throat> we had, often we had food poisoning because we had no refrigeration, no electricity, no running water. But we had land and we survived. We had chickens, uh, Wattenberger's feed and seed down there on California Avenue from where I lived, the east of Bakersfield. You could go down there and buy a hundred sound, pound sack of feed and they'd give you ten baby chickens. And the chickens were very cheap. So we had a lot of chickens. I had chicken pox one time when I was very young and an old Indian remedy was to lay you down on the ground and make the chickens fly over you to get rid of the chicken pox. I had all kinds of own remedies. We didn't go to doctors. We would tape ourselves together if we cut, cut real bad and, and we took coal oil and sugar. That was cough medicine. I mean, it's supposed to kill you now, but we did survive. I'm 70 something years old here. 74 years old and I've survived with those old remedies. Now we come to a time a lot of people know that I have lived like this. I have always been a very primitive person. People from the very time I was young, of course I lived in a shack with a, a, wood, a, with a dirt floor and, and a wood burning stove in it. I know how to survive. We build our home here in Nevada. And every home that I ever lived in, we don't have it here yet. We do have a wood-burning cook stove in our cabin. I've always had a wood-burning cook stove, always cut wood, and I always, I never paid much for heating in the winter. But I learned how to survive because I was, I grew up in very poor circumstances. It taught me a lot of things. I know how to cook. And if you ask my wife, I'm a chef. When, you, when I cook in my home, it's like you went to the Waldorf Astoria. I can make a really a fine table of very good delicacies. And I know how to do it from scratch. I can do everything, the gravies, the sauces, whatever. I can do that. And I learned it by necessity. <laughs> I want you to know that. Now, in Luke, the 21st chapter, 
we get a little introduction of what we're, we're in today. We're in a pandemic. We're in a crisis. And how do we survive the crisis? The first of all, we bought this home here. We had a smuggler's pantry. You push the wall in, and you got a pantry 20 feet long, 11 feet high with shelves. And I had that pretty much filled up before we ever had the crisis in America. We know how to can, we know how to cook. I plant fruit trees and we have gardens. When I lived here in Fish Lake Valley before, I didn't have to go to the grocery store. I only went to the grocery store for, for a fellowship. I didn't drink milk. I killed the deer and I made turkey and I froze. I know how to butcher. I, I raised chickens. We had lots of eggs, all of this. Now this is a necessity. This is a new way of life. I helped homeschool kids out there in Old River and they brought them to me for over 10 years homeschooling. Now people, if your children are going to get schooled at all, they're going to have to get homeschooled. I want you to learn all the things that people used to think I was eccentric and primitive about are now a necessary, dire way of living. You've got to do this. You've got to live. Let's read what it says here in Luke, the 20th chapter, starting with verse number 5. And some were saying of the temple that it was so beautifully decorated and handsome and shapely and magnificent stones and created offer and consecrated offerings laid up to be kept. And Jesus said, As for all this that you thoughtfully behold, the time will come when there shall not be one stone left upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when this is about to occur or happen? Spring upon us. And he said, Be on your guard. Be careful that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, appropriating to themselves the name Messiah, which belongs to me, and I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. Do not be led astray by false teachers. First of all, your spiritual welfare is the most important thing in the world. You've got to know who God is, and you've got to know the plan of salvation. It's very simple. God took care of all of it. He sent His Son to die for us, buried, rose again in the Anastasia of the resurrection, to live forevermore, to be our intercessors. And that's the only way of salvation. It's not through priests. It's not through offerings. It's not through anything else. It's not praying to any saint, nor to Mary, or any of that. It's between you and God personally. There is only one mediator between man and God, and that's Jesus Christ. Okay? First of all, you need to be spiritually secure and safe. I met a woman one time, I knew her, and I knew her husband very well, and he died, and he was a devout Catholic. And after he had died, she told me, I hope he's safe. Please pray that he will be safe. Because they pray for the dead. There's nothing you can do for, a dead, for the dead person. They're already gone. There is no more decisions, no more chances. That's it. Mm -hmm. The time is at hand, do not go out after them. And when you hear wars and insurrections, that means civil wars and disturbances and disorder and confusion, and we have it all over the world. Do not become alarmed and panic stricken or terrified, for all this must take place first, but the end will not come immediately. Then. I think what we're seeing here in this pandemic is previews of coming attractions. I think God is getting the world ready. First of all, right now, God has got the world's attention. Even the atheists can't go to church. When was the time that you would ever think in this world that you could not go to church? And yet, it's an accepted practice right now. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. Churches, the pastors are being jailed because they're having services in spite of the orders. 
people they are giving these orders to stay keep you alive. And then he told them, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be mighty and violent earthquakes in various places, famines, pestilence, plagues, and malignant and contagious and infectious epidemic diseases, pandemics. Deadly and devastating, and there will be sights of terror and great signs from heaven. Now between 1917 and 1920, because of the German flu, the Spanish flu, whatever you want to call that pandemic flu, influenza, 20% of the world died. They learned a lot of things back then that we can use to survive today. People in America, we know what we call snowbirds. What a snowbird did? As somebody that has a home in the winter and then somebody that has a home in the summer. And in some ways, Marilyn and I are almost snowbirds because we do have a place in Old River and we have a place in Nevada. The government is acting people today to choose where you're going to live. If you've got two or three homes, figure out where you're going to live and stay there. That's one thing they want you to do. They're stopping people on the road when you go to California, to Nevada, out here in the countries like this, and they begin to ask you, what business do you have there? Why are you going there? And in some states, they're asking you to quarantine yourself 14 days when you get there. In other words, don't go to the store, don't go out of your home when you get there. I would tell you today to get a good internet server and to get a good computer and watch God's Word being preached. You can watch movies, you can watch whatever. This is all available to you, self -enter home entertainment centers. Learn how to cook. If you possibly can, don't order food out. Don't go through drive throughs because you are making yourself available to something if somebody is sick there and they don't know it. Nobody's supposed to go to work with sick, but sometimes they do, and sometimes this disease, this influenza that we have, they don't know everything about it, they're learning more all the time, but sometimes people have it and can pass it on without knowing it. Self-isolate yourself. Order your food out of the grocery stores and have it delivered to your house. Now be careful because it still could be contaminated. So be careful in what you do. Learn to wash your hands a lot. I always did that anyway. Remember that 20% of the world died in World War I in the 1918 influenza. What caused the great mass destruction of the world with the flu is because we had a world war and people were going everywhere all over the world and they were spreading the virus. They found out now, supposedly, that heat stops the virus. And low humidity, if you live in a low humidity area, that that is also a little bit effective to the containment of the virus. It's a good time to go on a diet, if you need to. But learn how to cook. When you go to the grocery store, if you don't order anything out, order things, order the staples of food. If you like beans, if you can eat beans, order beans. Get them dry, they last longer. Learn to get cans and stuff to put them in. We already did all this, didn't we, Mary? Rice. Don't buy any more food and any more toilet paper than you have to. People have gone and they bought up toilet paper and selling them on the back streets on the black market. Isn't that something? The gun stores are open and running strong because they say the guns are, this is a, is a necessary item because people are having to protect themselves. You should have already known how to protect yourself. 
You already should have something to be able to protect yourself if people break into your house. They used to break into your house and, and steal TVs and stuff. Now they'll break into your house and steal toilet paper and beans and rice and flour. Learn how to use that bread maker that you've never used. Learn how to cook. Have a good freezer and a large refrigerator. Like I said, don't buy food cooked out any more than you have to. We get lazy. We get real lazy. We go to Taco Bell, we go to McDonald's, we go to Burger King, we go to Denny's, we go to all these places and some fine restaurants. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know of any restaurants that are open today. I've never known this in the history except until World War I when they had to contain that, contain that virus. People could not go to the grocery store. They had to order the groceries. They would send a letter to the grocery. And that's something else. Your mail could be contaminated. Let your mail set, if you possibly can, several days in a contained place. And maybe spray it with some type of disinfectant before you open it. This is necessary, people. Use in your freezer, if you have freezers, use your old food and restock it. Learn how to cut up your own chickens if you need to. You can buy whole chickens, they're cheaper. Learn how to cut them up. We already knew how to do this. Learn how to be self-sufficient. Thomas Jefferson said when he talked of America, he said, I want America to be a gregarian nation. In other words, people that are self-sufficient on their farms. My, one of my stepfathers, uh, Wilford Rose, they were Scots. And they used to say, he said that his, grand, his father went to California and he stopped over in Arizona and he lost a nickel and uh, he dug up the whole countryside over there which became the Grand Canyon looking for that nickel. <coughs> they were tight. His father spent six dollars, between six and seven dollars for groceries for a whole year for ten kids. They grew everything that they needed. Some of you live in cities where you can't have chickens, but if you can have a dozen chickens out in the yard, baby chickens are, I mean, you can't already buy one today because everybody's buying chickens up because they make eggs and you can eat chickens. Mm -hmm. People, you, if you want to survive this, you better learn some of this. Learn some of it. Doves and pigeons and things like that, you can eat also. All of these things are necessary in a society where you are self-sufficient. Rabbits, chickens, all of these things, and I have a real trouble killing anything except a wild deer or something like that. I don't know them. Every animal that I raise is spoiled. It is pampered and it is loved. I did not kill my chickens. I haven't ever had a marrow. In the 21 years we've been married, you've never seen me kill a chicken and butcher. But I get the eggs. I raised some real fancy uh, old English chickens. I used to sell the eggs to the hatcheries and I made enough money to take care of those chickens very well. And I had all the eggs that I wanted. Those chickens can live to be 20 years old. they got chickens 10, 15 years old that are laying down there right now in California. Learn how to take care of yourself. You learn, might learn how to fish. If you like fish, if you're hungry enough, you might like fish. <laughs> you can do that. But be careful where you go. They are still letting people fish in Montana, but if you come up there and you're fishing in a spot and you come up there and you want to fish, you've got to at least be at least 40 or 50 feet away from that person. You can't be right next to them. Social distancing. 
Ham radio is a real good way to social distance. Telephone is a real good way to social distance. You can still talk to your children and your grandchildren, etc., your cousins, your family, via telephone. Or ham radio, if you got a ham radio family like me. Gardens. What is some of the fastest growing food that you can grow in a garden? I think the fastest growing food is turnips and onions and radishes. Now, I don't like radishes, but boy, radishes really grow. Zucchini. <laughs> and zucchini. I don't know how long this pandemic, this crisis is going to last. They say 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, a year. If we really contain it, we might be able to get rid of it sooner. But what if it lasts two years, or three years, like in World War I, 1917 to 1919, and even in 1920? How can you survive living like this? Can you learn to survive? Even if you've got a small backyard, my grandfather, my step-grandfather, Amadeo Lamucci, says, uh, people grow grass, crazy people, crazy people. Don't grow grass, grow food. He grew all of his own herbs and spices and tomatoes and everything. He grew that, all of it. He didn't have one blade of grass in his yard. He wouldn't have it. Grass is uh, affluence. Gardens is practical. You might turn that front yard into a garden. Think if the neighbors don't steal it all. Things that you never thought of before, they will become very valuable. Seeds. Seeds with lettuce seeds, pumpkin seeds, whatever. Turnip seeds, onion seeds, onion starts. All of this may be very valuable. There was a Kind of a, a slogan. God, guns, and gold. Now, God is very important. But I'll tell you what, some people have large gun collections. You may see those people selling their guns to buy toilet paper and tomato sauce and hamburger in the future. Put your money in a safe place. Have a good safe. That's very necessary right now. There was a story about this avid gun collector. The avid gun collector went down and bought all the toilet paper he could have, took all of his guns out of his safe and locked up the toilet paper in the safe and the Listerine and the coffee in his gun safe. Because that was more, people were more likely to steal that than the other things. <laughs> These are necessities of life, people. Learn that which is necessary. Gasoline has gone way down because nobody's traveling. And when you do travel, please be careful. You like carrots? Plant a little row or two of carrots. Zucchini, a one or two zucchini plants, a tomato, a tomato plant or two, will take care of you. Learn how to take care of yourself. Learn how to do it in the future. Maybe you're, maybe you're an invalid. Maybe you can't do all of these things that I'm saying. But you can pray. And you can order your groceries. You can practice social distancing. Survival. Be careful with your mail. Be careful with your social distancing. Be careful with your shopping. Wear the mask. Wear the gloves. I go down, even here in Nevada, I go down and I put a mask on. And hopefully you can get a mask. Some places you can buy them. They say if you make masks, they're not much good because they're they don't filter fine enough for this virus. Buy rubber gloves, you can reuse them if you can, if you can wash them off. 
with some type of cleanser. When I go into the post office, when I go in the store, I wear gloves, I wear a mask. I go and I buy what I'm going to buy. I take my gloves off and I pull them and I pull them from the inside and I throw them in the trash can. I get in the car, I take my mask off. When I go home, I take my clothes off and I wash my clothes. Now you might say that's real radical. No, that's common sense. Common sense. Do everything you can to survive. Pray. God is there. He is still on the throne, people. I think God is teaching the affluence of the world a lesson right now. We're, we're in training. We're in kindergarten, people. In the end times, we will have this. I believe in the rapture. I believe that God is going to take his people up. But there's previews of coming tractors. What did he say here? This is not going to happen immediately after, but it will not occur now. But these are previews of coming attractions. You're living in the previews of coming attractions, people. We have staph infections. It's not even safe to go to the hospital. They wash you down with disinfectant when you're going to have an operation because you may get something worse. It may kill you. One of my friend's daughter went in for an eye operation. And she went into shock and her heart stopped from the medication. My wife has, got, has atrial fibrillation. She can't even get treatment for this and this could be cured. But when she went in for, for the stop her heart the first time and shock her heart, that day they got the first case of coronavirus in Bakersfield. They shut down all the hospitals. We haven't seen a doctor since. They only talk to you on the telephone. The doctors are afraid. The cardiologists in some of the hospitals, the, the, the doctors aren't going to work. They know how bad this is. People, wake up. If you want to survive, you better practice the things that I have told you tonight. It's necessary. It is not a luxury. It is necessary. Build a chicken pen if you can have chicken. Get rabbits. They don't lay Easter eggs, by the way. Learn the fish. Learn to prepare your food. Learn to cook. Learn to bake bread. A bread maker, like I said, that you had in your basement or your cellar or in your pantry for the last 10 years, get it out, read the instructions, and learn how to bake your own bread. It's easy. I do it all the time, Lord America. Ever since we've been married 21 years, I'm a real primitive person, people. Now it's paying off. People used to laugh at me. Now they ask me, how do we survive? How do we survive? How? Do you know how to cut your own firewood? If you live in a place where you can have wood heat? How do we know how long this is going to go? What happens if you lose your electricity? Do you have a generator? Do you have a backup? Is your house well insulated? Do you have an alarm system? Do you have a safe? Do you have emergency communication? These are things we need. Learn how to take care of yourself. Remember in the book of Proverbs how it says to look for a wife that knows how to spend and knows how to do all of these things is very important. Pretty is as pretty does. I have got one of the most wonderful, brilliant, genius wives in the world, Marilyn. She can do everything. When she was 15 years old, she could cook and butcher and clean, can do anything necessary. I canned apples, I canned plums, fruit, soups, everything. You can even can meat. You can can fish. You can can chicken. If you know what you're doing. You can be self-sufficient. 
learn to take precautions. We are living in a real epidemic, pandemic, dangerous time. Follow the rules. They're for your own safety. Never have we lived in a time that we had so little freedom. You can't even visit your neighbors, and we want to. I know we want to. But you have to self-isolate. You can still talk to them on the radio or the telephone. You better learn how to take care of yourself medically. You better learn how to buy a blood pressure machine and learn how to read it. You might also have a uh, oxygen blood level machine. You might learn to want to get yourself a blood sugar machine. A thermometer. You need to do this, people. I monitored, I went to a medical school for three years monitoring, and I didn't get a degree in medicine, but I know medicine. I know it well enough to keep my wife alive for the last 21 years, and myself, and my children. I know, I know home remedies. I know how to cook. I know how to can. I know how to butcher. I know how to fish. These things are very important today. Maybe you can't do all of these things, but you can do some of them. And you can get a safe relationship between you and God. That's the number one thing to do. Know your God. Know what you believe. This is a good time to be a Bible student. It is a good time. If you can't do a lot of these things, you can study the Word of God. You can pass these things on to others. My students out there, I thank God for you. All of you. I thank all of you that have called me, emailed me, and asked me to do what I'm doing right now. This is a command performance, people. How to survive this crisis. All I can tell you is how I have survived. You have to learn to be your own doctors right now. You do? You have to learn to be your own banker. You have to be, learn to be your own chef. And be careful whatever you do. Don't cut yourself. Don't fall. All of these things, be very, very careful because you can't get any medical treatment hardly at all. You have to be careful. You have to learn how to be a mechanic and change your own oil. Change your oil filter. Boy! See, I taught my children how to do all this, didn't I, Mary? Mm -hmm. I taught every one of them how to cook. I taught every one of them how to take care of their cars. I taught them all these things. I taught them how to cut wood. How to clean house. How to plumb, how to electrify the house, carpentry, all those things. See, I'm a weirdo. I do all these things. Because I grew up poor. And I grew up and I had to do them by necessity. Now, what happens if your sink stops up? Ooh. What happens if your sink stops up? What happens? What happens if the light switch goes out? These are now necessary skills. Get you a library. Go on the, the, the internet is the best library you can possibly get. How do I change a sink drain, a P drain? How do I change the faucet? How do I put, how do I put washers in the faucets? And by the way, you should have these things on hand. It's necessary. All of the necessary things in the world today are the luxuries of yesterday. Now it's a necessity. Learn to do this. Learn to do it safely. Learn. This is a great time of challenge. But it also can be a great time of reward. 
Our Father, we thank you for this message from your word and for the warnings. Father, thank you for all the blessings you give us in life. Please use this message to glorify yourself and to warn your people to help them to survive and help them to be good witnesses, help them to be good citizens wherever they are. In Jesus' name 